Hello, I'm Nick from Income Digs, and welcome to this video tutorial where it is our goal to show you exactly how we use different tools to execute the various processes within the world of real estate investing. Today's video is a follow up to the previous video on creating a journal entry for closing on a property. So, this video will specifically look at how to deal with a deposit that is given from the buyer to the seller. Um, prior to closing and then how we deal with that deposit in our accounting books once we close on the property as well. So again, relatively simple concept, but uh, if it's your first time doing it or if you're not too familiar with accounting, it can be a little bit confusing. So I'm gonna walk you through how to do it in QuickBooks Online. We're going to use a previous example as our starting point. So we're gonna get right into it here. Uh, you see that we have the balance sheet up on the screen. This is the balance sheet that we were left with at the end of the last video, showing our bank account with some money in it, uh, the fixed asset account with, with the building that we purchased, and then all of our closing costs were uh, put into our net income here. So this is where we ended up. We're gonna end up at pretty much the same place, but we're going to backtrack a little bit, go back in time and uh, look at this deal and assume that we gave a deposit when we executed the contract with the seller. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. So again, this uh, balance sheet is as of December 15th. So let's step back in time a bit to let's say December 1st. And let's assume that me, the buyer, gave the seller or the seller's agent a deposit of $1,000 to hold in escrow until we close the deal. So how would we record that in our books? So again, assuming that we're back on December 1st, we would come into our books and we would create an expense. Now we could create a journal entry. You can create a journal entry for virtually anything, but um, this is a relatively simple transaction so we can handle it much easier with an expense. So to bring up my expense screen, and I have to say who I paid. Um, in this case, let's say it's the seller's agent. So I wrote the check potentially to their real estate firm. So Realty USA is what I'll put in there. Um, the account that it's coming from is my Income Digs checking account. <clears throat> now it shows a balance of 46,551. That's the current balance. But if we were assuming we're back in time, I had more than that in there. So the payment date on this is going to be 12,1. I wrote a check. Reference number, if you want to put in your check number, you can. I'll put in number one. The business, again, as I explained in the last video, you may or may not use this. Uh, for our purposes, I'm going to continue using the Income Digs business so that we can pull our reports off of that. And now it comes to the account details. So basically, I'm writing a check to Realty USA. Now, it's not an expense, it's not something that will hit my net income. Basically, it's, it's still an asset of mine. It'll be leaving my checking account, so I'll lose the cash, but it's still my asset. That $1,000 is still mine. They're just holding on to it to make sure I don't mess up the, the contract. So I'm going to create another asset account to put this money into. So I don't have it yet, but I'm gonna create it here. I'm gonna call it the 123 Main Street escrow account. As I start typing, you see 123 Main Street is set up as an asset. Asset. I'm gonna type escrow. I don't have that yet, so it gives me the option to add it. So I click add. And now I have to decide what kind of account it is. It's not really an expense, it's actually an asset. So I'm gonna go under other current assets. It's not a bank account, I can't use the money to make purchases, but it is another asset. And I typically just use the category other current assets. 123 main escrow. This is not a depreciable account, not a sub account. Save and close. Okay. The description is deposit for purchase of 123 main. The amount is $1,000. It's not billable. It's not billable to a tenant. The class, you, again, you can or cannot use this. You don't need to. I'll type in 123 main. So if I click save and close, I'll do that. Now let's go back. Let's change my balance sheet to see what my balance sheet looked like on the 1st of December. So if I run that report, you see that I have $149,000 in my checking account and $1,000 in that escrow account. So my total assets are still 150. It just moved. I moved 1,000 out of my checking into this escrow account. Again, this is an asset. This is still yours and you'll be credited at closing. So now we're gonna see what that looks like. How do we credit that at closing? So um, we know, looking at our closing statement, previously 
this line here that we have highlighted, the deposit paid down was zero. Now, if I had given the seller a deposit for $1,000 on the 1st of December, when we close on the property on the 15th of December, that has to be credited back to me. I fulfilled my obligations of the contract, so now I get that back. So this would go in here, $1,000. You can see that it adjusts, that that's a credit to me, and that means I only have to come to the closing table with 102449 as opposed to the previous 103449 okay? So this is what the revised closing statement would look like. So we need to go back to that journal entry we made during the last video, and we need to account for this deposit to, um, to make sure our accounts balance out. So I'm gonna go back here, change the balance sheet to the 15th, and I'm gonna click on the 123 Main Street just so I can get to that journal entry. And here it is, the journal entry for the purchase of 123 Main. I'm gonna click on that, and what is great is we can go into this and edit it, and we can add lines and adjust it. So the first thing we're gonna edit, if you recall from the closing statement, the, the amount that I need to bring to closing went down by $1,000 because I had that money in escrow. So this is now 102,449. So I'm gonna make that adjustment. Okay, that's done, good. But now my accounts don't match, right? The debits and the credits don't match. We have 103,449 in debits, 102,449 in credits. That makes sense, I just adjusted one and not the other. So I need to account for that. All I need to do is go into that escrow account. Remember, we put $1,000 in there back in time on the 1st of December. We're gonna pull that money out of escrow and that will be um, used toward the funds to purchase this house. So if I go in here to the account and I start typing one, two, three, main, escrow, perfect, there it is. It will automatically fill in that $1,000. It's guessing that that's how much I wanna do. It's right, that's exactly what I wanna do. Um, and I'm gonna put this transfer of escrow is my description there. And what I will sometimes do is I'll move this. Um, they make it really easy to move these. Just click and drag it up. I like to see these two next to each other because these two really encompass how I paid for the property. I paid for it with 102,449 out of my checking account and then that other $1,000 came from escrow. So I'll, I like to put these next to each other in the journal entry. And that's it. Um, if I click save and close, again, it'll prompt me about the missing class fields. That's okay. Click yes. It'll bring me back to my balance sheet after I click back to summary report. And you see everything balances out again, just as it did at the start of the video. The one thing that you'll notice here is that this escrow account is now zeroed out. That's exactly how I want it. <clears throat> I don't have any money in there anymore. It went toward the purchase of, of property. So that is gone. Now you could go into your chart of accounts. You'll never use this account again. So you could go ahead and delete it. That's fine. It won't show up on your balance sheet then. You could also create a more generic kind of a closing escrow account. If you're not uh, closing on a ton of properties at once and it's really easy to track, you could just have one other current assets account called closing escrow. And you can have it there and it's there available for you for whatever properties you purchase. And that is it. That's how you deal with a deposit and an escrow account at the closing table. So again, a very simple concept. Uh, hopefully this video helped you to understand how the accounting of it works. And we will continue to build off of this example in future videos. And we are going to hit, in the next video, we're gonna hit financing. So again, the deal up until this point has been a cash purchase. I used money from my checking account to purchase the property. Obviously, we all know as investors, that's not always the case. We have various lenders that are involved, whether they're private or conventional. So the next video, we're gonna look at how to um, track a loan using the same journal entry and uh, see how that impacts the balance sheet. In the meantime, please leave your comments or questions and be sure to check out all the resources available at IncomeDigs.com. Thanks for watching.